hello and welcome to my last video before Christmas 2023. My goodness, how did that even happen? Uh, today I want to share with you some revelations I've had recently about working uh, in series, so creating paintings in series. But before I do that, there's just a couple of important things I want to share. Firstly, a huge, huge thank you to you for uh, watching me through this year, for subscribing, liking, commenting. Uh, my YouTube channel was hugely important to me and being able to share with you and have dialogue through the comments and so on is really valuable. And, and so it's just a big thank you, really. And as of December, uh, I hit 5,000 uh, subscribers uh, and 125,000 views on the channel. So that's really, really good for me and I want to keep into continuing that. So please do continue to follow, continue to uh, like and uh, make comments and share if you can, because that really does make a big difference. Uh, secondly, and related to that, uh, I currently have, and for the whole of December, a 10% discount offer as a thank you on my website. So that's all my paintings, all my sketchbooks uh, and work on paper, as well as my two online courses, which is making your mark and your sketchbook journey. And you just have to use the discount code Christmas 10. And I will put all of the links to those uh, in the notes. And as many of you might know as well, I'm currently working on a new uh, course, online course about collage. Uh, so if you want to join the waitlist for that, then I will put the link, link to that in the notes as well. And by joining the waitlist, that means that you will receive an early bird offer uh, when I release the course and only those uh, signed up to the wait will actually receive that offer. So that's that. And uh, what I want to do now is to talk to you about my revelations on working in series. Do try and, and watch to the end because I just want to come on here and a couple of more things I want to say. But let's get on to the business of uh, working in series and my revelations. So on the desk here, I have my uh, Constantina sketchbook, which is the Ramshackles Constantina. And if you've been watching for a while, you will have seen me do a walkthrough of this completed sketchbook. And essentially what it is, is I've worked, I've created a background of collage and mixed media, and then I've worked over it in the studio. And what that's really done is helped me to think about and understand more about the Ramshackles and what it is I might want to say. Um, around their colours, their shapes, their patterns and so on and the feel of them and what they're all about, the history of them really. So uh, that has kind of driven me to these kind of revelations. So this is my painting wall and these are some of my ramshackle paintings with just one layer onto them and you would have seen the video or you might have seen the video where I did that and I'll share it in the notes just in case um, but the point is these have been staring at me and I've been staring at them and uh, I've not been moving them on and the reason for that is that I felt that I needed to do much more in the way of studies before pushing through with them there was something that's been bugging me about the colours that has come to light through working uh, in the Constantina. And it's not to say that these aren't right, but it's to say that there's more to this story. And this brings me to my very first revelation or tip, whatever you like to call it. And that is to use series and working in series as a framework, but not as a restriction. And I think I got sort of locked into this idea that the colours should all be somewhat similar. And I don't even know where that has come from. But I think it's kind of made me think more broadly about the fact that when you're working in series, it's not to lock you into things. It's to kind of provide you almost uh, with a framework so you're not completely at sea, for want of a, a better phrase. Very, uh, very uh, appropriate for the ramshackles. Um, but... It's not to be to, to kind of give you another set of rules, really. And what I'm going to come over to, the, to do is to show you on the desk what I've been doing, because what has come up, what has become clear to me is that uh, there are other colours that I want to. Maybe it's at different times of year or different lights and weathers, but there's something around having another colour palette as well. So uh, I have been working on that and on the table here I just share with you are some of the swatches. 
So I've just created these uh, com combined, I've, I've, I've painted papers uh, and then uh, recollaged them just to get a feel for the colours and their combinations. And I'm really liking this palette. And really interestingly, uh, it fits exactly. These were collected, would you believe, on the beach of Skinning Grove, where the, the fishermen's huts are. And when I was painting these swatches even a couple of days ago, I was not even thinking about those and I just went to collect them from the shelf and just realized I thought oh my goodness they are exactly of this this like so this sort of these colors the the warm browns and oranges and rusts and those colder blues uh, and I, what I've done is I've created the palette using very similar colors but I've changed the blue from phthalo to ceruleum and I've added this rather wonderful raw umber, which has been on my mind, believe it or not, throughout the whole of the time I've been doing the ramshackles. And now I've got this colour palette. So at least some of the paintings may well uh, be of this, uh, this colour palette. And that's obviously will evolve as I develop. And that brings me very nicely to the second recommendation or sort of revelation really. It's not even a revelation, it's kind of obvious, but sometimes things are only obvious when you sort of kind of twig. Uh, so this second one is just one foot in front of the other. Do not over plan. It's, you kind of have to let the work have its own life and not overly control it. And you need to let it breathe. And I think that's my second revelation really, and and, and just to kind of keep it succinct, one foot in front of the other. And then the very third uh, thing, which I have been doing uh, quite a lot of recently, is to think about what it is I'm wanting to say. And so you have to keep digging and having the, having the concertina to work over and making the studies and then having these little gems of thoughts in your head and then writing them down uh, in my notebook here. Uh, is really important. So keep dig. The third one is to keep digging, keep listening, and be with the painting. So I, although it might look like I've had this complete inertia, I think it's been absolutely essential for me to have come up with this alternative colour palette because otherwise I don't think I would have given myself the breathing space. And that idea of keep digging and keep listening with the paintings is that you just need to keep tuning in and not be too governed by lists. It's funny because people often say to me, oh, you and your lists, they're great. They can be great, but you need to not get over prescriptive with them. So that's my third uh, revelation. Let me show you how I've been mixing all those colours to uh, with from the uh, primaries and uh, creating the darks with that lovely brown and the, and the, and the red, uh, and also mixing the brown with the blue, which gives you some gorgeous colours. And then creating these desaturated colours, uh, mixing with white. So a whole range of colours uh, created from that relatively simple palette. And then here I am using them on the panel, starting with some uh, charcoal and then getting to grips with the darks and using all manner of tools to uh, create this first layer. Very loose, very free, very playful. Nothing is set in stone at this point. I'm trying to create the range of colours that I've got on my palettes uh, back on that painting, uh, but nothing more uh, detailed than that at this stage. It's necessarily messy. I'm trying to get a mixture of marks uh, as well as the colours. And a little bit of a sneaky peek at what it looks like after the first layer. Kind of like all those sludgy browns and buffs and more richer goldy orangey colours and obviously compared to the colour palette that's uh, very similar so there we are so as if by magic the light has appeared in the studio so a great opportunity for me to come back on here and to thank you for watching and to say uh wishing you all the best of christmases uh wherever you are and whatever that means for you and thanks for watching bye bye